Well, the Obama administration has announced they'll support efforts to ban gay conversion therapies for children. The move was in response to a petition set up in honour of Leila Elkhorn, the transgender teen who committed suicide last year. She'd been taken to Christian therapists by her parents. In her suicide note, she pleaded, fix society, please. Well, what are these so-called therapies and do they just represent a dangerous pseudoscience? Joining me in the studio to discuss is doctor and television presenter, Dr. Christian Jessen, and from Los Angeles, gay conversion therapist, Dr. Joseph Nicolosi. Good evening to both of you. Uh, uh, Dr. Nicolosi, first of all, uh, Barack Obama um, has rubbished the idea of gay conversion. That's a pretty significant intervention, isn't it? A rather dramatic uh, intervention, but I think it's important to understand that it's a political statement. Uh, uh, Obama is not a psychologist, um, and the fact that the President of the United States is making a comment on this is telling us that this is a political issue, it's not a scientific issue, because it's a decision that should be decided by health, mental health professionals. Um, and we provide this therapy for those who are seeking change. They are unhappy with their same-sex attraction. They are looking for help, and we want to provide that help. So what do you claim that you can do? What we claim that we can do, certainly not in every case, but we claim that we could have the client see the trauma origins of their homosexuality. We believe that homosexuality is a symptom of early childhood trauma. We get the client to address those traumas and they will dis experience a diminishment in their same-sex attraction. Well, thank you very much for that. Dr. Christian Jessel, uh, what do you think of these claims? Reparative therapy really is the homeopathy of pseudotherapies. It is based more on belief than it is on evidence. And if you want, as you said before, that these decisions should be made by mental health professionals, that decision has been made by mental health professionals. Every single American Association of Psychiatrists, American Association of Psychotherapists, I can give you a very long, dull list of all these associations that have all said this sort of therapy should not be being practiced. And to what extent does this kind of therapy go on in the UK? We don't know because it's an underground mm -hmm. problem and that's where it's really frightening. When you push these things underground, they are unregulated. I know from experience that I have had patients come to me who have been having these therapies. They're very damaged individuals. They are looking for help, for support. My main issue with this sort of therapy is it is completely counter to the pure philosophy mm -hmm. of what therapy is, which is not to enforce a change on somebody, but to allow them to be who they really are. It is utterly counter to that philosophy and it's damaging and it's dangerous. Well, let's let just pick up on that you're you're stopping people uh, you're not allowing people be to be who they are is the claim that Dr. Jessel's making exactly that's exactly the opposite we're allowing people to be who they want to be we're not imposing we're not um, forcing people to change we're just exploring we're doing good Dr. psychotherapy Nicolosi, with respect good you're not allowing people to be who they good want psychotherapy to be. means you're Good allowing people to be who society no, wants them to be, and that's me. a big difference. But why is well, he interrupting uh, uh, me? Do go ahead. But why is he interrupting me? Do you go ahead. I mean, you're giving me an opportunity to, to represent what reparative conversion therapy is. We are joining with the client to explore their motivations. What are you looking for? What are you attracted to? What in your past might have contributed to your same-sex attraction? What kind of experiences might have happened in your childhood that is, that's turning you away from women? This is what we're not forcing people, we're inquiring, we're asking questions. We're not just taking at face value, you're gay. We're going beyond that. That's exactly what reparative but, or conversion therapy does. But, but underlying that has to be a belief in your case that homosexuality is Excuse not something... Me, belief in what? In your case, you must yes. believe. You, yes. be, you believe, and we don't need to go into this, but we, you believe that homo homosexuality is not something that comes from birth. So therefore, you go in with it, you, you, you approach the patient with a particular agenda. Yeah, no, not with an agenda, with a belief. I have the belief that all people are heterosexual in their nature and that a particular trauma creates the homosexual condition. I do not believe that people are naturally homosexual. Right, well, let, let's okay. just, all you have just to do look, is look at... All you have to do is look at human anatomy to see that. But I don't impose that perception on the client. I let the client decide for themselves. What, what are the dangers, do you think, Dr. Jess, of 
uh, the promotion of this kind of therapy? First of all, it sends out a negative message. Reparative therapy is all about shame. It's all about this sort of thing is not acceptable. And as I, when I so rudely interrupted you, and I apologise for that, you were saying you're allowing the person to be who they want to be. You're not. You're allowing the person to be what society, what you want them to be. And that is not what therapy is about. There is mounting unarguable evidence that this sort of therapy is dangerous. It causes an increased risk of depression and suicide, particularly in teenagers who are already confused, who go through it. Our first um, thing that we should always practice is do no harm.